supposed to be baptized, and if not, we can do it again next month. Is anyone said, hey, I want to get baptized today? Amen. Just checking. We've had some tremendous baptisms over the last few weeks. Got your Bibles. When dealing with the end times, particularly with the events that we're seeing, the preacher has to be cautious. Many believe that they know how things will unfold, but really we all know in part and we prophesy in part. We don't know. I've, I've been hearing about the last days since uh, 1979, and uh, I remember 88 reasons Jesus would show up in 88 a book. I remember the church falling for that and in 89. I do not know when he's coming again, but he told us that we would know of the signs and the times. Now, last week I had you laughing. This week I'll probably have you mad. Either way, the title of my message is pretty simple. I'm not praying it will get better. I want you to hear me again. I'm not praying it'll get better. In my heart of hearts and knowing the Word of God like I do and what little I know of it, I can tell you that it's not going to get better. As a matter of fact, it's going to get worse. So I'm praying in a hurry up and get worse because I'm excited about Jesus coming back. Amen. I'm, I'm excited about it. End, but I want to enjoy life every day until then. Can I get an amen? I mean, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep enjoying life, but I'm not going to get disturbed by what I see. And the second part of uh, my title would be Don't Shoot the Messenger. Say that with me. Don't shoot the messenger. That's all I am is a messenger. I just want to share the word with you as best I know how. Amen. Without being, uh, um, I want you to catch it. So I want you to know that I'm not praying it's going to get any better. But what I am praying for is that we get better. See, I can't change what's going on out there, but I can change what's going on in here. Amen. I can't let, I can't let that out there change what's going on in here. Can I get an Amen. Amen. So when I look at the last days and I see what's going on, it's very important to me. I want you to say this verse with me, then I'm going to leave you alone. Psalm 119, verse 165. This is one of the longest psalms. It is the longest psalm in the Bible. But in, when you look at that, in this verse, it's so powerful. I'll say it first, and I want you to say it after me. Great peace have they which love thy law. This book, his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin against you. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. We know the word is Jesus. So when I read this, great peace to they which love Jesus, and nothing shall offend them. I want you to say it with me now. Great peace that they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. We're going to say it again. Great peace that they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So if you get offended, it tells me what? You don't love him. Wow. The hardest thing about pastoring, the hardest thing about being a business owner, the hardest thing about being a parent, the hardest thing about being a grandparent or a guardian is dealing with people that are easily offended and allowing it to take your peace away. So I would tell you that if you love God, you're not going to stay offended. You can get upset. You can get mad. And then you can get over it. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I mean, that's, that's just the word of God as we're going to lay it out. So Matthew 24 tells us this, and Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said, and you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. Everybody say, not troubled. Okay, so I'm not troubled. I'm, I've heard of it, but I'm not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It's going to happen, but it's not yet, 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 yet. For nations going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and, and weird places. All these are the beginning. This is the beginning of sorrow. So we got a not yet and a beginning. A not yet and a beginning. So understand this as we move toward these last days. First, that nation is going to rise against nation. Now, this doesn't just mean Canada is rising against America. America. This is ethnos. This is race issues. This is culture. This is people of, of uh, when we say the blacks are rising against the whites and the whites against the, uh, the Asians and the Asians against the, the, uh, the uh, Native Americans. This is what's happening. And we're seeing this in our nation today. Amen. It's just like people are prodding. They want to make it happen. They, they throw the card down and it happens. So we're seeing this rise up. So notice it's not just about country because the next verse says kingdom. I told you I'm going to go fast. Kingdom against kingdom. 
Here we see kingdom is the word royalty, realm, or reign through the notion of a foundation of power. It has to do with wars between countries. Countries are self-governing political entities. We see it right now with Ukraine and Russia. Did you know I looked up last night how many conflicts and wars are going on right now in the world? 27. You're only hearing of one, but there are 27 wars and, and conflicts taking place nation against nation right now in the world today. As I walk through it, I realize that there will be wars and rumors. Last night, I got a message from a friend of mine that said, even in Russia right now, they were taking pills because they, there was a, a threat of nuclear invasion into Russia. You don't know when it's going to happen. We got China rising up against America. We got North Korea <coughs> doing their thing. <clears throat> in the hermit kingdom, they call it. You, you don't know, Iran, Iraq, mainly uh, Iran, we don't know when this is going to happen, but I'm telling you right now, I'm praying it won't get better. It's just going to get worse. I know for some of you say, Pastor, you can't be that way. I am that way because I realize I can't change this. Jesus set something in motion. He said, this is going to be happening in the last days. He said, there'll be famines, amen, a scarcity of food, destitute, amen, to be wanting or lacking. You realize a third of the world is well-fed, and we're a part of that? We are well-fed. You can't tell me, anybody in this house or watching right now, that you haven't ate lately and said, now I'm full. I, I've hit my limit. I, but you could have got more. Amen. You could have got, I told my pastor this week, I have ate better this week, and I've done a long time. I, I got to take uh, the Ramirez's, uh, Josiah's dad, out to eat. And mom, I had a great time. I haven't ate like that in, in a month. Italian food. And you know that I had the audacity to look at him and say, look, I'll take a, a calzone to go. <laughs> what a nation we live in, huh? I mean, we blessed. Everybody say Blessed. We bless. So a third, a third of the world is well fed. A third of the world is underfed, and another third of the world is starving. And we got to remind ourselves when we do go extra and, and get it, we got to realize there are famines. We, we, we're kind of escaped from that right now. We don't really feel that. But there are people that are starving. They, every day is a fight to survive. Amen. 30 people die every 60 seconds of starvation. Every minute, 30 people die in the world of starvation. They don't have it. Amen. So we see th this prophecy that Jesus laid forth. This is going to happen. He said there'll be pestilence. When I looked up the word pestilence, it was a disease that won't go away. It lingers. It, uh, it, it, it uh, I'm going to say malfunction. It mutates. Amen. It keeps, it keeps growing a little bit more, and people keep buying into it. So here's this pestilence that takes place. Amen. It could be all cake. It, it could be a part of a flu, but it could be something as bad as the Black Plague or bubonic or something like that. Then he said earthquakes. There would be earthquakes in diverse or different places. An earthquake, the word seismo is the word in the Greek, a commotion, a tempest, or a gale of the air or of the ground to rock or to vibrate back and forth to throw into fear or concern or what we call climate change. You hearing your preacher? Amen. I've been hearing them gripe about that. Yeah, climate change has never stopped. There's always been climate change. The climate will not quit changing. You're only going to make it on this earth at best in your 90s. Come on. I, I, I don't know anybody that made 100. But even at that, the world's been around for at least 5,000 known years, millions before that. And because of that, the earth is always changing. Even it's always shifting. Uh, California getting uh, snow and rain like they haven't had in 100 years. We got earthquakes. Turkey just got hit by my dog right now. It's in Turkey. Amen. Just got hit by an earthquake. Ripped that place apart in southern Turkey. It, it's not going to stop. And Jesus said, listen, these things, this is the signs of the end. That's why I, I don't pray that, that it's going to get better. Amen. And not that, listen, maybe I shouldn't say I'm, I'm going to pray it's going to get worse. But the bottom line is, I don't pray it's going to get better. I see things going in such a snowball way. First off, we looked at the physical part. We see wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and, and nations fighting against one another and, and, and this grab for power and all these things. And Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning. Then he goes on in verse 38, says, For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Now it says here, they won't know what's happening. You do. You know what's happening. 
You understand what you see it. They may be blind to it, but you see it. You understand. You sit back and you watch the news and you go, my God, we're in the last days. Amen. I can see it. They can't see it. They're blind to this thing. So when the flood came, the waters came up, the boat started rocking. The, all the family got in there and, and they looked at Noah like he was a madman for building a boat. Again, at a time when it had never rained, the water came up from the ground. It was due from the ground. Amen. Never came from the top. We used the term I, I learned in college is what we called a canopy theory that the earth had this giant canopy over it. Amen. And because of that canopy, the ozone couldn't get and couldn't age you. So people were living four, five, six hundred years. They were having to give away thousands of Christmas presents. I'm sorry, that was before Christmas. Amen. But, but either way, they lived a long time. And then the canopy gave way onto the earth for 40 days. Amen. And during that time when the canopy gave way, the ozone thinned. And for thousands of years, we've been dealing with the same ozone. Your hairspray won't damage it. Our rockets won't damage it. Your car won't damage it. Your electric batteries might damage it. But I say keep burning your car. Can I get an Amen. So we got in a crazy time in life. But when you look at this as truth, it changes everything in your life. When this becomes absolute truth, that everything's filtered through this. Pastor, you're going fast. I'm going to get faster. I love the movie Titanic. Who didn't? It was such a love story of a boat and water. It's amazing. This giant ship that was built. It was the number one selling movie for, for years. It was during a time of, of extravagance. So it was rocking 20s. In the morning, I realized everything's about to change. When you look at it, no matter how I vote, no matter how, what I say, lives are never going to be the same. I've been confused, and this is what hits me. When I realized the Titanic, they were on that ship. It was a tremendous time of, of prosperity. And then it hits the iceberg, and the ship's going down, and the band's playing on. True story. The band played for two hours. While the ship sank. And I'm watching a nation that doesn't realize we just hit an iceberg and we're sinking. And, and the band plays on and keeps going on. It's like nobody's noticed that the, the nation has tilted, is heading down. And I look at it and I say to myself, I, I don't understand it. I've been confused by the hostility of family and friends. I, I look at people I've known all my life who are now hate-filled with, with a degree and, and an agree with opinions they would never express on their own. I think that I may have entered into the twilight zone, I told my pastor this morning. You can't justify this insanity. We've become a nation that has lost its collective mind. Yeah. We see other countries going socialist and collapsing, but it seems like a great plan to some in D.C., Somehow it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are in America. People who say there is no such thing as gender are demanding a female president. Some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born. And other people are not held responsible for what they are doing right now. Criminals are caught and released to hurt more people, but stopping them is bad because it's a violation of their rights. After legislation, let's just, and this is the crazy thing for me, after legislating gender, if a dude pretends to be a woman, I'm required to pretend he is. People who have never been to college should pay the debts of college students who took out huge loans for their degrees. Immigrants and, with tuberculosis and polio are welcome, but you better be able to prove that your dog is vaccinated. Irish doctors, German engineers, South African police who want to immigrate to the United States must go through a rigorous vetting process, but many illegal gangbangers who jump the southern border, amen, are welcomed here. If you cheat, you get into college. If you cheat to get into college, you go to prison. But if you cheat to get into the country, you go to college. Pointing out all the hypocrisy somehow makes me a racist. Nothing makes sense to me anymore. No values, no morals, no civility. We are clearly living in an upside-down world where right is wrong and wrong is right, where moral is immoral and immoral is moral, where good is evil and evil is good, where killing murderers is wrong, but killing innocent babies is right. Our nation has shifted. We hit an iceberg. We're acting as if somehow if the music keeps playing, we're all going to be all right. Amen. This great unsinkable ship, the Titanic, amen, shows that. Proverbs 16, 18. What, what sunk the Titanic? It wasn't the iceberg, my friend. Proverbs 16, 18 said, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. What sunk it was arrogance. 
thinking you'd never fall, thinking we're too great to, to be messed with. Nobody will mess with our military. Britain at this time was sending missionaries around the world. They brought great revival and reformation. It was Britain that gave the world one of its greatest spiritual gifts, the King James Bible. The Titanic was a message from the Lord to Britain, calling her to repentance, pride, and had replaced vision. They were resting more on what they had done than on what was left to do. The Lord did not sink that ship. It was pride. These people sailed boldly into dangerous waters with reckless abandon. The unsinkable proved to be incredibly fragile. Everyone noticed the jolt of the iceberg, but in a few minutes, the party continued. Two hours later, it rested at the bottom of the sea. Many people in this hour feel very confident that all is well. However, there is some jolting that's going on. It almost seems incomprehensible that a catastrophe could be upon us. I'm not praying it's going to get any better. I'm praying you get better. I'm praying that we can handle the storms that are ahead. In other words, what Jesus used to describe the end time, the sorrows, the beginning of sorrows, or the going down will be much like the days of Noah and the sinking of a great nation. Matthew 24, 10 says, And then shall many be offended, Woo! and shall betray one another, and hate one another. You know, I'm going to tell you just real quick, just in, in regression looking back, I saw that that plague that COVID thing caused people to start hating one another. Some were mad that they took the shot. Some were mad they didn't take the shot. Some were mad they stayed home. Some were mad that they went out. Some were mad they were wearing a mask. Some were mad they didn't wear a mask. We were family. And then the plague began to separate us and, and began to, to make, cause people to hate one another. And many false prophets rise. They shall deceive many. And, and because of iniquity shall abound uh, sin here, failure. Amen. The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. The, the love of many will wax cold. The, the, when he talks about the love of many, he's talking about the church. He's talking about the believers. We're the ones that love. But all of a sudden, our hearts start getting waxed. We start, we start getting complacent. We start saying, Sarah, Sarah, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Amen. But again, I'm telling you, this thing is going to get, maybe getting worse on the outside. It's got to make us better on the inside. Can I get an amen? Watch out for offenses. Watch out for Luke 17, 1 says, Then said he unto his disciples, It's impossible, but that offenses will come. Why? Because we're people. People get upset. People get mad. Offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone was hanged around his neck, cast into the sea, than that he he should offend one of these little ones. The children, careful with the kids. Be careful with those that first get born again spiritually. Amen. Beware of what you're doing. And the apostles said unto him, increase our faith. Help us because we're struggling, man. Listen, the apostles, the disciples were always offending one another. They were always jacking with one another. Amen. We, we in a church that's always jacking with one another. Do you hear me? If you're a man in this house and you get around me, I'm going to jack with you. This man going to jack with you. It's just what we do. We jack with one another. And you need that to find, see me after church. But we're going to offend one another. We're going to say some things. But what we're doing is trying to mature one another. We're trying to help one another grow, and we're having some fun. We don't just sit back and, you know, just real sissified and, and not hurt nobody's feelings. Amen. But we want you to know that it, it was not our intentions just to offend you. Amen. We want you to grow. We want you to figure this thing out. So the, the disciples said, you know what? Increase our faith. We struggle with it. See, an offense, a sin, a crime, a wrongdoing, creating a resentment or anger, something that causes anger. So in order for there to be an offense, there must be an offender. Who gets offended? And this is when me and Jesus have had really big talks. Because I, I don't always, listen, let me ask you a question. Do you always agree with your Bible? Don't look around. I don't. <laughs> there are times Jesus says stuff, I don't know if I agree with that. I got to work through that. And then he works me through it. Amen. He walks me all through. But first you see the offender. It would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck. It would be better to put on a vest full of concrete and sink to the bottom than to offend one of these little ones. Amen. That, that's what he's saying here. We should be careful not to offend. Amen. So here's the conundrum. 
that I struggle with. The things I've said at times I know are offensive. If you saw me at, uh, on a picture yesterday at an ice house, to some that would be offensive. Here we find that truth will divide. I struggle to love people, but when their beliefs contradict the spirit of the word of God, I got to say something. So when I get around people and it's like, okay, if I say this, if, if they press it on me, I'm just going to have to tell the truth. There are times I have told the truth to people and offended them. They, Honest to God, let me just tell you something. I felt like I was between a rock and a hard place. You First off, you know who I am. You know how I stand, so why you ask me that? And then I get, get bombarded by certain folk that they want to hear this because of this new way of thinking today that is so screwed up and contrary to this book. It, you know, you've got to make your stand, but you've got to do it in love. We live between a rock and a hard place, don't we? Amen. There are times I, I was careful around my mom and dad what I said. I didn't want to hurt my dad or drive him away from God. But my goodness, dad, you've got to straighten up. Amen. You can't quit. You've got you to you get in a place where you, this anger and resentment. Mom, you can't keep being this way about our past. You've you got to let all that stuff go. So what we do here, and I mentioned this during the midweek service, you've got to limit your liberty by your love. There are certain folk that you've got to learn that you cannot push their buttons because you're going to mess them up. They can't handle you. I'm just being straight up with you. They cannot handle you. Some of you are just too doggone abrasive. I'm talking about mainly those that don't have hair now. You're just too abrasive. So you got to know who you, what you can do. And it's getting to know people. Amen. It's getting connected with people. So it's important that we get that way and that we know them. So there are certain things in life, and I mentioned this during the midweek, that uh, I don't have a trouble you drinking beer around me. But 40 years ago, I would have. Forty years ago, I'd have smelled your breath. I'd have hung out with you just to <laughs> remind myself. Amen. I don't get it. Doesn't bother me now. But I'm going to tell you, if a brother's around me, he's weak with alcohol. I'm not going to. I'm going to encourage those around him. Don't don't pop a beer in front of him. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. If you quit something, nicotine, caffeine, cocaine, amen, whatever it was, you quit. Don't do something like that around somebody else. So here's what Paul said in Romans. He said, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Limit your liberty by your love. In other words, if you know somebody who is really real Jewish that will not eat pig, do not invite them over for a bacon sandwich. If you follow the preacher, amen. So you got to learn that. So that, that's what he's saying here. Don't, don't be belligerent that way. The offended, Proverbs 18, 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Now, here's where I struggle. I don't live in offense. Great love are those that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great love are those that love thy law, and nothing shall. Great love are those that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Why do we go through life looking for things to offend us, to be bothered by it? Amen. To be, I mean, when I say offended, I'm talking about stuff that keeps you awake for days and days and days, and, and it works on you, and, and, and bitterness starts weakening in your heart. God, help me not to live a life that's offended, always offended, okay? I just want to say that. But on the flip side, when you are offended, when a brother is offended, they're hard to reach. They're hard to connect back with. They throw the walls up. They act like now you don't matter. And here's the thing. As a pastor, now for 30 years, I have made like one statement. I made one statement about I don't condone liquor. I don't condone getting drunk, but I don't condemn you drinking. One of my best families I love quit the church over it. Another man heard me use the word rapture. He don't believe in the rapture. I have blessed his family for years, walked out of the church because I used the word rapture. It's amazing to me how we'll allow one little offense erase the rest of all the stuff we've ever done in our lives for people. Your kids, you say one thing to a kid, and all of a sudden now they offended. They forgot you changed that diaper. You could have slid a pillow over their head when they were two. You could have shut them up a long time ago, and yet you let them live to the point where now they're 14, 15 years old and know it all. NASA needs to call them because they need them down at NASA because they know everything. 
If you got offended and got over it, pat yourself on the back. You didn't let you didn't let Channel 13, you didn't let the news, you didn't let the church down the street that started up new. Amen. You didn't let nobody else. I heard pastors talking this a couple weeks ago, offended by the church, just moving down the street. I don't care how many, I don't care if it moved next door. Amen. I'm for you coming here. We got a lot of people here. Just don't act like you know it all. Amen. Because we've been here a long time. Luke 17, 3. Take heed that to yourself if your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. And no, rebuke you. Don't be mean about it. Just go up and say, look, man, hey, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. You know what you say? And do, do me another favor. Don't do it in public. Pull them private. I didn't like, you know, I know you didn't mean that. Surely you didn't mean that because you know I could whoop you. So, so, so let me just tell you right now, if he trespasses, amen, if he, if he says something, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. Let him go. And then Jesus does this thing, this Jesus thing. He always does this Jesus thing. And if he trespasses against you seven times, stop it. I just forgave him once. Now you tell him if he does it seven times? I, I got seven times in a day, turn again to him and say, repent, shall forgive him? Seven times a day, seven times 365. I don't know what that is, but it's a lot of forgiving. <laughs> See, he said, you got to keep forgiving. In other words, Jesus wasn't saying it about him. He's saying it about us, that we should not live a life offended or bothered by If somebody holds it against me, I'm just going to say, forgive me. If you don't forgive me, that's on you. Amen. But he said, if they keep trespassing, go to them seven times. And later he said, 70 times seven. <sighs> that's that Jesus stuff. That's hard stuff. Y'all ain't there, neither am I. We're getting there. So here's the thing, guys. The instruction here about offended, principle of release. Man is most like animal when he kills. Man is most like man when he judges. But man is most like God when he forgives. Amen. Listen, if we kill, we're like an animal. If we judge, we're like a man. But if we learn to forgive, we're like Jesus. Amen. For nobody taught us more about that. It's a fact there will be many offended in the last days. Watch out. I'm just telling you it's coming. And I want you to prepare yourself. I want you to guard your heart. I want you to know things are going to get worse, but you're going to get better. Amen. And watch out for it. There's a fact that when many are offended here in the last days, amen, you got to take heed to yourself not to fall in. Because it's a trap. It's a snare. Amen. It's unforgiveness. You can't fall into that. You, when you deal with offenses, our, our response determines our future. Psalm 91.3, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. God's going to deliver us. Offended people, they produce fruit, my friend, envy, strife, anger, outrage, jealousy, envy, hatred. They can't help themselves. They just stay that way. They stay in that offended mode. You know some of them, some of them family. Amen. It's, and it's a struggle you fight with, but you don't have to be that way. You can get better. Can I get an amen? The consequences of staying offended, insults, verbal attacks, wounding others, division, separation, broken relationships, and finally backslide. I've never known a church that split that wasn't offended. Every church I know that ever split, ever got mad, people ever left, they were offended. So I'm telling you, COVID, that COVID thing offended people in this house, and we lost people from here. They got offended. And here's the thing. What am I to do? What was we supposed to Was I supposed to go say, I'll tell you what, let's just shut down the church. Let's shut it down. We'll just go online and be them online people all the time. And you don't have to get close to me. I don't have to get close to you. I cannot do sterile. I cannot do sterile. I, I have got to infect somebody. Amen. Amen. I can't do it. What happened in, in, during that time, because I, I haven't hit on this much, but I'm telling you, people got offended. And, and I love them. And I miss them. And they supplied into this house. And they blessed people in this house. And they worked in this house. They worked with our children and our youth. They, they worked building this house. They were part of this place. And all of a sudden, something happened where they heard. or it, it, They didn't come to me. That's the wild thing. Didn't come to me. It got offended and walked away. And now hard to, it, 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 listen, the truth of the matter is, you spend three weeks away from church, you just started a new habit. It's hard to get back in. That's why you got to stay with it and press into it. 
the consequences, separation, broken relationships, financially backsliding, the progression, Matthew 24, 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So there's the offense, there's betrayal, and then there's hatred. The offense comes after the betrayal. Betrayal literally means to be put in prison, to lock someone out of your life. Lock them out. To hate, to detest by persecuting, afflict constantly so as to distress or annoy. You know, one of the great curses we have today is called social media. We're able to really hurt people now with our offenses because we can let everybody know that we are the victim. And we are the ones that, that and we don't go back and think of how much he's forgiven us so that we can forgive them. And all the sins that he did not. What if God decided, I'm going to go on social media about your life? What if Jesus said, you know what I'm going to do, Ken? I'm going to share with them some stuff that they don't know nothing about you. Matter of fact, Ms. Linda don't even know it, and I'm going to post it. I'm with you, sir. I'm shaking my head, too. I would, I would, I would immediately get off Facebook. Amen? But thank God he doesn't do that. Can I get an amen? Yeah. What he said is, I forgive your sins, and I take them as far as the east is from the west. I forgot them. You keep bringing them up, but he forgot them. Forgiveness is full. It's factual, and it's forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he let it go. The preservation mode, it happens, Proverbs 18, 19, an offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city, and disputes are like the the barred gates of a citadel. Amen. When they, when they sit down, an offended person refuses entry into anyone they feel could hurt them again. They filter out anyone they think owes them, and they, uh, they hold out until they feel they have paid their debt. you got to pay your debt to me before I let you back into my life. They, uh, they open their life only to those who feel that they are comfortable with. Amen. Without knowing the walls of protection become prison walls. You just locked yourself into a fortress. Amen. You've kept people out. You wonder why you ain't got no friends, because you ain't been friendly. It's a false sense of self-preservation and protection. It keeps you from seeing your own character flaws. I got to keep moving. Luke 17, 5 says, and the apostle said unto him, increase our faith. Matthew 24, let's keep moving through Matthew. But I'm going to skip down here to verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted. You're going to be put to death. You're going to be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Can you imagine turning away from the faith, walking away from God, acting as if this book has no power in your life anymore, that the people around you that you've loved and cared for and prayed with now it doesn't matter. It says here that it's going to happen. They're going to walk away from the faith. I hear people say, well, you can never be unsaved. I, I don't, I, I, I never lived that way. I lived like I always want to be saved. I don't want to take a chance on it. I really don't. I don't. I, well, you know, once saved, always saved. I, I love the thought. That's a sweet thought. Amen. But if, you, if, I, if I walk away from the faith, what just happened to me? You know, so I don't want to take that chance. I, I believe you can stand and you can fall. So here you turn from the faith and we'll betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear to see many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but he who stands to the end will be saved. He that endures to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world, amen, through the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. When I preach this, I want you to hear me. First off, I'm not praying things are going to get better. I'm praying we get better. Because I, there's an end coming. Now, on the flip side, don't shoot the messenger. Amen. When I read the Word of God, I realize there's several things here going to happen. First, conditions are going to worse. They're going to worsen. They're just going to get worse. It doesn't mean that we have to. It don't mean you got to fold. It don't mean you got to give in. It don't mean you got to go run on the bank and take all your money out. Yeah, I'm, do you do you. Amen. But I'm just telling you, in this life, you need to understand that it's going to get worse. I'm praying for my kids. Hallelujah. Our homes are going to weaken. Amen. We, we are at 60% divorce rate. We understand that. But this, is around, this ain't just America. This is around the world. Amen. People are struggling with, with, with light and, and the moral decline. 
It just keeps declining. Paul spoke about it, amen, in the book of Romans. And I mean, when he spoke, about it, I, I sat back and I go, that's all. I went to the message. I said, what do you say, Paul? He said, worse followed. Refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men. All lust, no love, and then they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it. Emptied of God and love, godless, loveless, wretches. Come on. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them. That's the saddest part of this whole verse. You quit acknowledging God. So God quit acknowledging you. By, and God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing, bickering and cheating. Look at them. Mean-spirited, venomous, forked tongue, God bashers, bullies, swaggers, insufferable, windbags. They keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives. They ditch their parents, then they get in the way. Stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded, and it's not as if they didn't know better. They know perfectly well they're spitting in God's face, and they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. I sat back, and I read that, and I said, God, you, Paul spoke of 2023. But where are we at right now? Amen. What we see. Amen. This week. You can play a little something to kind of soften the tone. <laughs> eleven women. Eleven women were honored for bravery. Eleven international women. International means Russian, Hispanic, Native American, Chinese. Over two billion women they could have chose. They chose eleven women for bravery. They got to the 11th one, and it was a man. Jill Biden put a medal around his neck, congratulating him on his bravery. And I thought, you couldn't find another woman out of 2 billion women to honor? You have to put a man in to show this new diversity and inclusion. Amen. Do you understand where we're at? The Titanic, my friend, has been hit. Amen. Our nation has hit an iceberg and it's shifted. And many of us will be gone when our kids are dealing with it. My concern is how much further is this thing going to tilt before Jesus comes? Or will it go all the way down? Well, you depressed me today, Pastor. Don't shoot the messenger. Just sharing the message. Matthew said, endure. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. That word endure is the word hupomone, hupomone, the ability. you got to have 40 years I've been in this area enduring, enduring. I'm not just boasting. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you life is about enduring. It's about giving it another day. I thought to myself, I need to post on my mirror, give it one more day. Because sometimes I hit a day and I go, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this no more. Amen. People ain't listening. Folk get offended. Amen. Upset. And all I'm doing, God, all I want to be is a messenger and ride my Harley. And what I hear is this, that, and the other. Just give me one more day. Let me preach it one more time. Help us to endure. Help us to preach this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Jesus, it's about the king and his domain. Amen. The king and his domain. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I believe things are going to get better for the saints. The world is going to get worse. I'm not praying it's going to get better, but I'm praying you will. Hallelujah. I can see things deteriorating. And there are times that I, I hear people gasping and they want to throw a life preserver. And I sit back and I go, you know what? It is what it is. It's, this thing's going to get worse. I just gave you the whole weather report. Amen. And what's going to happen on our nation, in our world. Hallelujah. And I can tell you this. 
2 Timothy 3, 1 says, But mark this, there are going to be terrible times in the last days. People are going to be lovers of themselves, money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Say it ain't so. Amen. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiveness, slanders, without self-control, brutal, lovers of, of the good. Not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, concealed, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, denying his power. Don't have anything to do with them. Whew. So here's our conundrum again. I want to reach people that are just like that. But I'm realizing that those are the people that were probably in the church world that have lost faith and walked away from God. But I want to tell you, there's a whole world out there of hurting people that don't know Jesus. Or maybe they just got a little bit of Jesus. And they need your help. They need your love. Maybe they in that list in Romans, but you still got to love them. Maybe in this list of unruly children. If I would have abandoned my kids right after they were unruly, I wouldn't have the joy I got right now. Because kids are going to go through things. And then they'll snap back and you love them, right? Say you do. Thank you. Amen. So understand God has been patient with us. And he wants us to endure. Life is a test. I close with this. Count it all joy. Brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Everything you're going right now, going through right now, is to make you mature, is to grow you up. When I read the news, I, this morning I read some of the news, I went, are you kidding me? It's just getting worse. It's getting worse. It was like God said, yeah, your prayers are being answered. It's getting worse, but you don't have to be. You can keep growing. You can, you, I, I love this fact. I was with a police officer the other day. He was on his way to arrest somebody. He said, yeah, as long as there's criminals, I got a job. And I thought to myself, it looks like I've got a pretty secure job too. Because what we deal with in life, realize that rough weather is not going to last. Many times it's not the size of the problem, but it's the length of it that weighs us down. It ain't that I had a problem, it's just it keeps on going. Amen. It just keeps on and keeps on. That's what weighs us down. My favorite, not in the Bible verse. My favorite, not in the Bible verse. This too shall pass. You ever heard anybody say that like it was Bible? You know, the Bible says this too shall pass. It's not in your Bible. It's not there. I hunt it all over. 66 books, couldn't find it. Went through the concordance, couldn't find it. Amen. Read the introduction, couldn't find it. So it's my favorite, not in the Bible verse. This too shall pass. Amen. You've had problems in life. You thought, my God, am I ever going to get out of this? Yeah, it's going to pass. Amen. It's going to get by. Let us not lose heart in doing well. For in due time, we will reap. If we faint not, if you gave up too early, there's trouble. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory, but beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Let me ask you to do me a favor here. Why don't you close your eyes? Because if your eyes are open, you're going to see something. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to see the best life for your kids. I want you to see something unseen. I want you to see them mature with a good job, a career, hands lifted in church, tears flowing down their face, an appreciation for all that you parent and grandparent and guardian have done for them. I want every young person in here to open with their eyes closed I want you to believe God for your parents. That you can see parents not like you saw on TV, on Disney, anywhere else, but you see a loving, caring parent that loves you. I want you to think about what matters most in this life. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. I want you to start realizing that life is a test. And that the sickness that now invades your body will not be there forever. 
there's a tremendous opportunity that you believe in by faith will cause it to dissipate and disappear before you leave this planet and you will be healed of your disease. That God will help you with your walk. But no matter what happens, this too will pass. And when it does, we'll be singing with the King. And all the things that we don't understand, all the things right now that we see that are messed up, the great ship of Zion, this great church, this great fellowship has never hit an iceberg, has never sunk to the side, has never been demeaned on the oceans of life. This ship that you're on, just like Noah's Ark, is going to make it to the other side. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Woo, everybody say a miracle that I got through that whole message. That's a lot of stuff. Amen. Great peace of they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. My prayer, God, give us more love for you, more love for your word, that nothing shall offend us. And if we get offended, we get over it quickly. Amen. If I get our servant leaders to come up very fast. Amen. I'm running out of time. I knew I would. Billy, thanks for coming today, sir. Amen. Your tithing offering envelope is in front of you. I'm sure many of you, while I was preaching, you were making out your tithing. Just making out TLCC. Those watching online, thank you for giving to holywild.tv. I mean, uh, dot, holywild.net slash give. Man, it's so much for me to remember. I used to just say, get your offering envelope. But now it's so much to remember. There's so many ways you can give. We thank you for giving. Amen. To our missions, you gave toward missions this week to Ecuador. Amen. As we had a missionary here uh, we shared our service with on the midweek. But quite a few announcements. I know SWAP is meeting today. Pastor David is on his way up. Amen. And we got to move quickly. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Amen. Give it up for your pastor.